We never practice that one, do we? Panicking. We never practice panicking. We practice going out neatly. Pardon me, fire. Look out. Pardon me, fire. Fire. Yes, pardon me. Fire. Engineers at Japan's crippled nuclear plant have hit another snag. They've discovered radiation outside a building on the Fukushima Daiichi site and say it's potentially lethal. Workers found the radiation on a duct between a reactor building and an exhaust pipe. They estimate its level as 25 seabirds per hour. That's the highest they've ever detected outdoors. Anyone exposed would die within 20 minutes. Managers used the exhaust pipe to release radioactive gases after the accident in March 2011. They say the adjoining duct could still contain radioactive substances. A top U.S. nuclear regulator says Japanese officials should consider discharging contaminated water at the plant. The chairperson of the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, Allison McFarlane, says all countries with a nuclear program have similar concerns. Contaminated water issue, it's, it's a very complex issue, and there's not going to be a straightforward solution. There's no silver bullet. McFarlane says decontaminating vast quantities of radioactive water is a huge challenge. Workers at Fukushima Daiichi have started a process to remove radioactive substances from the contaminated water, but they have no way to remove tritium. It's not for me to, to tell the Japanese what to do, but I would fall back on what the IAEA recommended, which was uh, within uh, regulatory limits, they... Uh, the Japanese probably should consider releasing the water. She suggests that the tritium in the water could be diluted before it is released into the sea. Now they think they're pulling this off right under our noses, but I'm on to them. Japan's lawmakers approved a bill on Friday that gives the government authority to designate official information as special secrets. The law gives strict penalties for those who leak the information. NHK World's Tomoko Kamata has the details. Lawmakers with the ruling coalition used their majority in the upper house to cut off debate on the secrecy bill. Then they voted in favor of it and made it law. This law will enforce the security of the nation. It is our duty to fully explain its purpose to the people. It's regrettable that the ruling party is forced through the bill with their power of numbers. The law gives senior government officials authority to define information as special secrets. That would include material related to defense, diplomacy, counterintelligence, and counterterrorism. Public servants found guilty of leaking these secrets could be jailed for up to 10 years. Citizens who deliberately obtain this type of information could also face punishment. The law is closely related to Japan's new National Security Council. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe set up the body to streamline the analysis of information gathered by various ministries and foreign countries. Senior officials say the secrecy law is essential for convincing other governments that they can be trusted to share intelligence. However, some, including international human rights groups, writers, and scientists, are worried about the power the law gives Japanese leaders. Members of the country's largest lawyers group argue the legislation could allow government officials to classify information arbitrarily. Tsutomu Shimizu says it undermines the public's right to know. And the possibility of long prison terms will intimidate whistleblowers. Officials can't activate this law just by itself. They need to create detailed regulations, operations manuals and guidelines. We need to keep an eye on government officials so they don't undermine human rights. 
Prime Minister Abe has vowed to set up panels to oversee the decisions officials make under the secrecy law. And he says experts will draw up guidelines for what would constitute classified information. Critics say Abe was in too much of a hurry to pass the bill and lawmakers couldn't debate the details thoroughly. Tomoko Kamata, NHK World. The Tokyo Electric Power Company is planning to spend about $28 billion over 10 years to rebuild its finances. NHK has learned that the plan will be announced later this month. TEPCO has been struggling as the operator of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. The company plans to rebuild thermal power plants older than 40 years, mainly in the Tokyo Bay area. It aims to work with other companies to modernize these facilities. The utility hopes to raise the efficiency of the thermal plants in view of the suspension of its nuclear power stations. To cut fuel costs, the firm plans to build facilities that use cheaper shale gas imports from North America. TEPCO will also invest in overseas gas development projects. TEPCO officials say they have to improve profits to pay compensation for the nuclear accident as well as to finance decommissioning of the Fukushima plant. The utility does regard these tasks as their top priorities. Japanese government officials have drafted a basic energy policy. It says the country will maintain nuclear power generation as an important base source of electricity. The draft has been presented to the industry ministry's energy policy panel. It says Japan needs to reduce its reliance on nuclear energy as much as possible. The draft does go on to say, though, the country will continue nuclear power generation as long as the safety of power plants is ensured. It notes that nuclear power allows the steady supply of electricity at a lower cost and without aggravating climate change. The draft represents a major shift from a policy drawn up last year by the government of the Democratic Party. That policy was aimed at ending nuclear power generation in the 2030s came after the 2011 nuclear accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. All nuclear reactors in Japan are currently offline. The new draft policy contains no mention of a plan to build or rebuild a nuclear power plant. That leaves the government with an option to construct more reactors. The draft says Japan aims to promote renewable energy as a promising domestic resource over the next three years or so. The government plans to approve the new energy policy early next year. Motegi said he understands that a deliberation is underway to continue nuclear power generation on the condition that its safety is ensured. Motegi said nuclear power would provide a steady supply of cheap electricity without aggravating climate change. I think the government needs to compile a feasible, balanced and responsible energy plan as part of its efforts to correct the confusion over energy policies of the past. The previous democratic government had declared that it would work to end Japan's dependence on nuclear power by the 2030s. Victims of the Fukushima nuclear disaster will have more time to claim compensation. Japanese lawmakers have extended the limit on claims from the accident to 10 years. Japan's upper house passed a bill clearing the move on Wednesday. Current civil law limited the right to claims against Tokyo Electric Power Company to up to three years from the accident. The new law acknowledges that some victims have been unable to ask for compensation. It says many struggle to calculate the damages because they still live in temporary housing. The new law will allow victims to file a claim with TEPCO until 10 years after the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi power plant in March 2011. The law also calls on the government to improve the claims consultation system and help victims get compensated as early as possible. Hmm. Well, isn't that interesting? Because ever since Obama took office, he's really been pushing for nuclear power. And he reiterated that this year in his climate action plan. He said, thanks to the ingenuity of our businesses, we're starting to produce much more of our own energy. We're building the first nuclear power plants in more than three decades in Georgia and South Carolina. Obama also expressed support for the country's booming natural gas development, while announcing that he would direct the Environmental Protection Agency to create pollution standards that would restrict power plant carbon emissions. And indeed, they are. The EPA's regulatory agenda for the fall of 
2013 lists hundreds of pending energy and environmental regulations that are going to limit emissions from power plants as well as give the EPA authority over water that's on private land. <laughs> the EPA will set emission limits that are going to effectively ban the construction of new coal-fired power plants unless they use carbon capture and sequestration technology like those college kids recommended. And then next year, the agency will move to limit emissions from existing power plants, which could put more older coal plants out of commission. But what about those jobs? Those all-important jobs. Well, already EPA regulations have contributed to the closure of more than 300 coal units in 33 states. So he doesn't really care about coal plants. He just wants to keep those nuclear plant jobs flowing. Now, the EPA is also working on a rule that would expand the definition of waters of the U.S. under the Clean Water Act to include water on private property. Now, Texas Republican Lamar Smith said the EPA's draft water rule is a massive power grab of private property across the U.S., and it could be the largest expansion of EPA regulatory authority ever. The EPA says the rule is needed to clear up uncertainty left in the wake of a U.S. Supreme Court decisions on the agency's regulatory authority over bodies of water. <laughs> So the Supreme Court ruled one way, and so the EPA and Obama are just, of course, true to form, going to interpret that ruling and that law the way they see fit, which is, you didn't actually mean that we don't have authority over water on private property, right? Because we do. And so now they're Obama and the EPA are going to be shutting down all the coal power plants. They're ramping up nuclear technology, get doing away with renewable energies, forcing you to put smart meters on your home, and now they're going to be taking authority over water on your property. Sounds very socialist to me, but we all know that socialists can't keep the lights on. Just look at what's happening in Venezuela. Now, even though Venezuela has the largest oil reserves in the world and two hydroelectric facilities that generate two-thirds of its power, its socialist government appears incapable of meeting the rudimentary needs of the people. Some of those earlier blackouts were part of a rationing scheme by the government, while others were due to utility failures. The outages have affected the country's oil production facilities, of course, because those oil refineries are powered by separate generators. How convenient. Now, President Maduro suspects sabotage. After all, the outage did occur while he was delivering a live national address on television, uh, which is just kind of wildly convenient to help support that sabotage theory since the president had just given most of the country a free television for every home. And Maduro has used earlier outages as political fodder to attack his enemies. So is that the kind of political game playing that we can expect to see here with the grid. After all, we are continually being told how vulnerable our grid is to cyber attacks. So if you don't agree with me, oops, I'm sorry, your power went out. <laughs> I can just see Obama playing that game, sort of like we saw when the uh, government shut down and he just shut down all the national parks to make us feel the pain. I don't think he would have any problem flipping the switch on the nation's power grid. Or, and I, I bet he cannot wait to get his fingers on the internet kill switch. Of course, since they're not spraying the sky with uh, solar radiation management, that's why they need nuclear energy, which is also a conspiracy theory to think that nuclear energy isn't the cleanest and the best out there. At least that's what they're telling us. And if you don't think so, well, here's proof. Smartplanet.com says so. They say that nuclear is on par with geothermal, and it's virtually the same as wind. Now, they don't really specify if they're talking about a nice breeze on a Sunday or if they're speaking about a hurricane, but nevertheless, they think it's on par. And they go on to crit critique Germany, saying that Germany thinks it's okay to emit tens of megatons more of CO2 because they like coal better than nuclear. Well, remind us. How many Germans have died from nuclear power radiation? And what about Americans, the English, the French? Oh, yes, all zero. 
And they uh, continue on saying that renewable energies, uh, we're not even talking about the vast tracts of land and sea that's taken for wind, nor are we talking about species threats, maintenance emissions, worker dangers, and even maritime dangers for offshore windmills. But even with all of that fancy propaganda and the failure of the mainstream media to report about Fukushima, the devastating effects of that nuclear meltdown cannot be ignored. Even the president of the company that runs Fukushima is speaking out. TEPCO's president said that the triple meltdown following the earthquake and tsunami in Japan was a warning to the world and the nuclear industry must be prepared for the worst. He said that despite what the nuclear industry and the public wanted to believe, nuclear power was not 100% safe. We have to explain, no matter how small a possibility, what if this barrier is broken? We have to prepare a plan if something happens. It's easy to say that, you know, almost nothing's perfect, so we don't have to worry about it, but we have to keep thinking, what if? And that's exactly true. What if? What if the hundreds of tons of nuclear waste that are dumping into the Pacific Ocean every day are killing five million birds off the coast of Australia or causing radiation and radioactive isotropes to be found in fish off the coast of California and Canada? And what if all those melting starfish are suffering from radiation? It's, it's not far-fetched to understand that radiation affects the nervous system and starfish have a very primitive nervous system but just like they told us that mercury in the vaccines is safe now they're telling us that nuclear energy is also safe Obama wants a new generation of nuclear power plants but that doesn't mean clean nuclear power plants no it means just much of the same because clean nuclear energy doesn't produce the weapons grade byproduct that is necessary for the military industrial complex to build their war machines. And there you have it. Diners around the world have long appreciated Japanese cooking. Now it's being officially recognized. UNESCO has decided to add Japan's traditional cuisine and food culture to its list of intangible cultural heritage. The organization holds a meeting every year to decide on what new registrations should be included. The system is aimed at protecting important examples of regional customs and traditions around the world. This year's meeting started on Monday in Baku, the capital of Azerbaijan. Japanese cuisine, or washoku, was among 31 candidates. I think the listing was too late. We haven't understood enough how much people around the world love Washoku. I'm delighted. Washoku is based on the Japanese spirit of respecting nature. I hope people around the world will understand the heart of Washoku as our food culture. In October, a body that does preliminary screening of candidates recommended that Washoku be added to the list. This recommendation was considered to be quite influential to be endorsed. Japan's food culture has become the country's 22nd intangible heritage element listed by UNESCO. Others include kabuki and no theater. Many people in Japan's food industry hope the listing will increase the popularity of Japanese cuisine around the world and help boost exports of domestic food products. I hope the listing will prompt us to reflect on the diet that Japanese people have eaten for generations. Murata called on people to eat more rice and appreciate it more as a traditional staple. Japanese leaders are aiming to boost the standing of the agricultural industry. They're creating a system that will make the most of abandoned farmland. Diet members passed legislation to create so-called farmland banks in all prefectures. The banks will borrow unused plots and rent them out to farmers and businesses for large-scale production. Officials say the banks will publicly solicit borrowers to ensure that everyone has a fair opportunity to use the land. And they say the banks will be strictly monitored. Prefectural governors are likely to have the authority to dismiss executives if the banks perform poorly.
fire, look out, fire upon me, fire, fire, look out, upon me, fire. Oh. Yeah. We never practice that one, do we? Panicking. We never practice panicking. We practice going out neatly. Pardon me, fire. Look out. Pardon me, fire. Fire. Yes, pardon me, fire. We never do that. I don't know why we practice so much. If we could learn to climb over one another, we might save a few lives. I wonder.